Thank you, Mr. President. No one should normalize what's happening on the Senate floor right now. We are all awaiting for the white smoke to come out of Republican leadership offices so that the millions and millions of very scared people in my state will be able to see what is about to happen to their lives. This isn't a game. People's lives are at stake. People's health is at stake. And yet because this debate now is devoid of policy and substance and seemingly just about delivering a political victory to Republicans, we wait and we wait and we wait. And people are scared. All over the Capitol today there are parents of children with disabilities, many of which rely on Medicaid in order to keep their children alive. I've spent a lot of time with them over the course of the last six months because to them, the measure of a civilization is how it treats the most vulnerable. And their kids with these deep disabilities are amongst the most vulnerable. And for much of the last six months, I've seen anger in their eyes, anger that Congress would choose to hurt their kids or to force their family to go bankrupt. Yesterday, I saw something new in their eyes. I saw fear. I saw deep debilitating fear because they sensed that we were on the precipice of doing something that they didn't think was possible. A piece of legislation passing the Senate and the House that would deliberately and intentionally hurt their children. There's no way around it. It's not hyperbole. The House bill that we are debating right now, it guts Medicaid to the point where 15 million people, the most vulnerable Americans, would lose access to health care. I know it's very hard for people in this chamber to understand because we all have really good health care. But when you have an expensive disease or your child has an expensive disease and you lose insurance, you can't pay for it. You can sell your house, you can sell your car, you can exhaust your savings. And for some families, that'll cover six months worth of expenses for their sick child. At some point, the patient dies if they don't have access to health care. And so people are scared. They are really scared. And they're scared not just at the consequences of the House bill eventually passing, but they're also scared at the casualness with which this debate seems to treat their plight. There are rumors now that at the end of this process, we are going to vote on what has been described as a stripped down, gutted version of the original Republican health care bill. It might have one or two provisions in it, maybe the elimination of the individual mandate, maybe the elimination of a few taxes. And the intent would be to essentially punt the more comprehensive debate about what our healthcare system is going to look like to a conference committee. And I want to talk about that for a few moments and what the consequences of that are. First, I want to talk about what the consequences are if that end result is achieved for the United States Senate. Why do my colleagues choose to run for the United States Senate if they are prepared to surrender the biggest policy decision that they will likely face to the House of Representatives? Why go through all the trouble of running, of raising all the money, of getting all the votes to become a U.S. Senator if you aren't prepared to actually render an opinion and pass a bill on the biggest priority issue facing this country right now, the future of the American health care system? 
Republicans have been unable to come up with a bill that can get 50 votes. Why? Because you refuse to engage with Democrats. And so now the solution is to punt by passing a stripped down version of the bill, handing all power to the House of Representatives, surrendering to the House of Representatives. What's the point of being a U.S. Senator if you aren't actually going to make policy, if you are just going to hand over the keys of policymaking to the House of Representatives? This is the United States Senate, and I disagreed with Senator McCain's vote yesterday, but I heard the speech that he gave to us, that this should be the place in which we make the big, tough decisions about the future of the American economy. And the Senate will put an out-of-business sign on the outside of this chamber if we pass a scaled-down version of this bill that admits we can't come to a conclusion. What's the point of being a United States Senator? if you just hand this debate over to the House of Representatives, and by the way, that is what will happen. If the Senate goes to conference with the House of Representatives and there is only one bill in that conference, and that's what will happen if a stripped down version of this bill goes into conference and the House has a comprehensive reform bill, the House bill will be the only one in the conference committee. The House bill will become law. The House bill will survive. It may have some small cosmetic amendments to it, but all of the power will be given to the House of Representatives in those negotiations because there's only one idea that will be present. And so let's go back for a moment and remember what was in that House bill that so many of my Republican colleagues told me was deeply objectionable to them, would never get a vote on the Senate floor. 23 million people lose insurance. Rates go up by 15 to 20 percent. People with pre-existing conditions in most states likely will lose all protections available to them. Insurance plans won't have to cover maternity care, mental illness, addiction any longer. Medicaid, gone as we know it. To my small state with an $8 billion Medicaid program, a $3 billion cut, children losing their ability to stay alive because they lose their health care insurance, seniors in nursing homes being put out on the street. That's not hyperbole. That's real. That's what happens when you kick 23 million people off of insurance. That bill or some version of it would emerge from the conference committee because the Senate would have defaulted to it by going to conference with nothing. But that's just the long-term consequence. The short-term consequence is that in that this scaled-down bill reportedly will include an elimination of the individual mandate, insurance markets will fall apart. It, it, Everybody here knows, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, that the only way that you guarantee that people get priced the same if they're sick or not sick is to require people to buy insurance when they're not sick. In fact, the Republicans know that because in their bill that they wrote behind closed doors, they included an individual mandate. They did. It was designed in a different way. They said that if you don't buy insurance, you'll be penalized by being locked out of the insurance market for six months. But they had a penalty for people that don't buy insurance, just like the Affordable Care Act has a penalty. Both Republicans and Democrats understand that in order for the insurance markets to work as they are regulated today, you need to encourage people to buy insurance when they're healthy and penalize them if they don't. The Republican bill does that just like the Affordable Care Act does that. So if you pass a bill that removes that mandate, then every insurance adjuster, every actuary who works for a major healthcare insurance company will tell you that the markets will crater because individuals won't buy insurance until they're sick, knowing that they can't be charged anymore. Healthy people won't buy insurance, rates will go up, insurers will flee the markets, the entire thing collapses. That's the short-term consequence of telegraphing to the insurance companies that you are getting rid of the individual mandate, even if that's 
not the final result, that telegraph signal at a point where insurers are already rethinking the markets because of the sabotage campaign that President Trump has undertaken would be catastrophic. This is not a game. These stakes are big. And the casualness with which people are approaching this debate is scaring the life out of people in my state, out of parents of kids with disabilities, of folks that are dealing with sickness and illness all across this country. It is not too late. We don't have a communicable disease. We aren't going to physically harm Republicans if they come talk to us. It's time to abandon this Republican-only approach, come work with Democrats. Let's jointly own the problems that still exist in the healthcare system, jointly own the solution. People are scared of what is happening in the United States Senate today, and there is a different way.